Ah, well, happy Friday. Um, well, I tell you what, for like the last two weeks, I've hardly picked up this camera, and I don't have shit for footage, so I figured, well, I better do something if y'all want some premieres to watch, because I literally don't have any fucking footage left. So, what are you doing today, Rick? Well, um, so there's this. I bought this little battery booster pack thing, and then found this little light to go on there, and yeah, she works fucking minty, except for I broke it. See how that corner's broke out and that corner's broke out? Yeah, that that's not going to work. Um, so I got to do some little repairs on that. But in the meantime, we we're working on corn planting. I dug this fucker out of the box. We got another one. I was going to make a video on how to put the bastard together, but uh, I didn't. So maybe on the next one. There's another one up there in the... As things get, uh, now we're doing the highlight added thing again. Fuck's sake. Whatever. Um, as things, uh, the garden gets bigger and whatever else, we're trying to adapt and get larger and fucking be able to plant more faster and maintain things better. And this is one of those steps. We're also going to have to build a hiller to go behind one of the tractors. I'm not sure which one yet. Kind of thinking the John Deere because it does have power lift on it and we don't have any attachments for the power lift anyway so we may as well build one and a hill it would be kind of cool because i've been pulling hills up with the with the hole so far and uh yeah it's a good workout for the arms but other than that i uh i don't care for it so <sighs> we put this thing together down a lot there it's got your little marker on it so you can uh there's the kickstand so it doesn't tip over that's your row marker. And I put it right there at my, as the row marker because I can fuck it close enough. Um, I want them spaced far apart anyway so I can run the tiller in between the rows. Um, and we'll get out there and I'll explain our planting method and everything that we've been doing so far. And we still got onions from Evan Kibbe that's got to get put in the ground. And I got more ground that I got to turn over and till under and all that other stuff. We haven't planted any corn for the cow yet. And it's fucking near July. Oh well, I've had a lot going on in the shot. We've been making leaps and bounds and progress, and we're uh, at that point now where we're we're settled in pretty comfortably uh, with making investments and things like that. So now it's time to hammer down and make some fucking money. But we gotta get some shit done around the farm first. So let's do it. Okay, so this cedar, this is an Earthway Precision Garden cedar. Well, nothing as precise as planting by hand, but Oh, maybe some of the big fancy shit is. I'm sure the commercial shit is, but we're not, uh... We're not commercial by any means. So, this comes with a variety of different plates. Like, this one will do... This one's for carrots and... Cabbage, onions, turnips, lettuce, all that stuff. So, real small pickup on that. They sit in that little... That little pod there. Um, leeks, asparagus, spinach, all that is there. We got beans, small peas on that one, beets, okra, Swiss chard on that one, and I think this one's like peas, early June peas, you know, the bigger ones, jumbo peas. So, there you go. And, uh, we could read through all this. And then you can figure out your, your cycle here is on your, as your, oops, put it back on the stand, Rick. Why did I put, take it off the stand? And as your wheel goes around, right? So, it's a little belt drive on there. And I'll try to get you down in here. Why did I go to that side? Go this way. So as the wheel comes around, it uh, picks up in the little pod there, and it actually dispenses it. When it comes up to the top, it drops it in, goes down through there, and this is your depth gauge for how deep you want to plant your product, your seeds. 
So corn's gonna be probably somewhere right about there. <laughs> Tighten that bad boy up. Don't get crazy. So it funnels down. Beep. This opens the ground, it's your opener. And uh, see it drops in behind, your little chain drags along, cover it up, and then you got your compactor wheel. That, uh, your closer wheel, whatever you wanna call it. Closing wheel, fuck, I don't care what you call it, but here you go, that's how she works. Um, it's not uh, super complicated. It's basically a miniature version of an old planner. Uh, I would like if this was a cast wheel. Of course, for what you pay for them, you're not going to cast wheel. If that was a cast wheel, it would be a little bit heavier. It'd do a little bit better job compacting the ground or closing the ground. Same with this one, but whatever. I guess we're going to take it out there and see what the fuck happens. I'm sure with any of this stuff, it's going to require some adjustments and tuning, some work, all that other stuff. And we got to do some more tilling before we get into it. All right, well, let's uh, take a little walkabout. Hey, look at that dipshit. So somebody found his way out in the storm last night, and uh, I haven't seen him all day today, so I didn't know where the fuck he was. Idiot. Um, uh, yeah. So, anyway. I'll get into that another time. So what they did is they went back in the back corner of their kennel there. See how I cut half long grass, half short grass in there? Because um, they like to harden the long grass from the bugs sometimes. And then sometimes they like to sun themselves to get away from the bugs. So whatever. Um, back side of the shed. Somebody got to clean that up too. Whatever. They went and dug underneath the fucking shed and then into the back and then they got out. So... I needed another fucking project between the dogs getting out and the cows getting out and whatever else. Fuck's sake. Good thing it's Friday. So, we're down here. Uh, I'm actually caught up on videos now because I didn't record anything for like two weeks. Hey, dingling. You want something to eat? Go back in the fucking hole that you dug. Yeah, I gotta clean all this up too. Um, and that. Wind blew that over. We've been trying to get focused on the garden and not the little patio thing that we got all the fucking um, tiles and whatnot for. But So here's what I just tilled. We turned this with a plow. I need to trim the grass along the outside there yet. Um, but I'm not too worried about that right now. So this is on the north side of the garden. This is uh, all that equipment's going to get moved. And we're going to probably be going to that fence, that old fence line, and then some yet. But I'm going to go to that fence line right out of the gate. This is going to get planted into sweet corn. And then we need to do more onions. And then we're going to need to fence. But fencing is so fucking expensive right now. So that means everything down here has got to get moved. The old international, the four bottom, the tether, the uh, front mounted V-rake, the fucking old baler. Um, that fucking Chevy Trailblazer, the tank, the fucking cedar, both the cedars up there. There's two grain drills up there. Uh, one's a grass cedar, one's a grain drill. All that shit's got to get moved. We'll pull all those posts out, and then, uh, I might just run the haybine through here if it stands back up. And then, uh, till, and then plow it under. We'll see. But for now, I need to get, uh, the corn in the ground. Um... Time's a wasting. Rain's on its way. Look at that fucker. <laughs> that was so grown into the fucking furrow that I didn't want to fuck around with it. Oh, God. Okay. Well... That's going to be a nightmare in the fucking uh, tiller at some point. I'll uh -oh. plant, around with, plant around it. We'll come back and cut it out. Um, I'm not picking too much rock here. We'll pick it as we go through and tend the corn because I want to get it in the ground. 6.30 right now, but rain's supposed to be here by midnight. 
and uh I don't have any video for tonight, so maybe I'll fire a live stream. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Luke's already ragging on my ass, so. But, you know what they say. Plant in the dust, the bin will go bust. Or the bin will bust, or whatever the fuck, however you want to say it. It's supposed to be a good crop, so. Um, the edges here where you can see all the sod, I'm not even going to fucking try to plant them. I'm not even going to try to worry about it. Um, once everything germinates and comes up, then we'll be taking the tiller and going in between rows, and then I'll just work these edges down and keep working that in as green fertilizer. Um, so the garden will be, this area will be bigger next year than it will be now, but we'll just keep working at it. And I told Katie we can run this fucker all the way to the swamp. I don't care if we need to. Um, I would like to get a reservoir out there at some point so we could pump irrigation up here versus using the well that uh well it's a saves on the well and b there's a lot more micronutrients in the fucking water that's in the swamp so it helps it actually helps i think and it's a softer water than pumping from 300 feet below the ground so not that we have terribly hard water but it's still going to be a softer water And warm too. Once you're on the sprinkler for a while, that's a cold shock coming out of the fucking ground from that far down. So, I, uh, oh yeah, look at that shit. The back of the tiller here. <laughs> that's what I pulled out of there just with the tiller. That's what I pulled out of the tiller to clean it out. So where we're tilling right now used to be the old ba bale yard. And there's uh, all kinds of twine in there that I've never seen, I've never used the colors of before, but they say it breaks down in a year or 18 months or something like that in direct sunlight. First of all, that's bullshit. Second of all, once it's in the grass, it doesn't break down like fucking ever. So let's get the planter and see if we can do something. All right, uh, Bradley Seed Company, peaches and cream hybrid sweet corn. Pure seed, 99.95%. .9 other crop seed, 0.03%. Inner matter, 0.02%. Weed seed, 0%. 300 count seeds. I, eight ounces, roughly, yeah. We got a couple of packages of these. So, we're gonna pour them in here. I'm gonna give you a little demonstration on the old uh, hoist here. On how these old fuckers are. Wait a minute. Oh. I see. You can't even fill the fucker half full. Otherwise, it'll uh, be overflowing. So, that's pretty much all you can stick in there. Perfect. Okay. So, obviously you wouldn't have the kickstand down. You'd flip that fucker over. So as your wheel turns, we're gonna have to go around to this side. Slide this on a bitch over here. Look, we're already, we're already planting seed. Look at that, look at that, okay. So as your wheel turns, as if you're walking, your wheel would turn, right? And then your little cups pick up the seed. See how it picked up that seed nice? And then it drops it, bink! I should turn on the light. Maybe you didn't see that so well. So, see that little cup? One nice little seed, boom, done. Down in the, down in the, and they come fucking, they come slinging right out of there. So watch right, right, right here. And it's actually pretty consistent on just doing one, which is pretty fucking impressive, I have to say. So, I know I've seen some other ones that are you know, everybody fucking makes one. 
So essentially, you can't fill it past this point, otherwise you're uh, not going to have, you'll be, you know, your seat will be overflowing into that, so. Um, I'll take this package with me. We'll throw it in here and we'll just watch it and see if we're getting low. We'll dump that one in. Otherwise, these are uh, um, sealed in uh, the fancy bags, I, uh, Mylar or whatever the hell they are. I don't know. They're supposed to be good for like 20 years or some shit. So buy a bunch of them. Um, now we have, obviously, I have our row marker and all that. So let's go out and see what we can do here. Okay, so as I stated before, this is not perfect ground. Um, it'll be much better ground next year, but we need to get some crops in. And uh, we're just gonna kinda see what happens here. As things go, we'll uh, make some adjustments and we'll see how many rows of corn we can get in here. We're gonna have to just try to gauge this again I want to be able to work this side till it in as green till it or uh, green manure green fertilizer whatever you want to call it same with back here so this is where we're gonna start we're gonna leave plenty of gap we can come in and knock it on us all, all this tall grass till it in and use it as fertilizer um, I can see that this thing is it's actually dropping very 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 precisely other than we're getting a little clumpage going on. Seems like you got to take your time with it. Oh. Every once in a while, I get one that uh, definitely So it's definitely got its problems with these little clumps of sod and whatever. And uh, as we go, we'll try to overcome those and uh, just make an adjustment in the pickup. As long as we're not putting too much down pressure on it. Yep. Got to clean the sod out once in a while. That's okay. Watch your old exposed seeds. You'll get them with the with the planters that I use too, so whatever. and uh, flip this over the other direction and again we're just keeping an eye out for exposed seeds I'll explain to you my process here as we uh, once we get done here I'll explain to you my process and my uh, thought process and how all this is gonna work out so and maybe it won't 
I guess you just have to stick around, subscribe and all that junk. And these are the things that cause problems in there. And uh, so they'll continue to cause us problems for this year. But the reason that I'm spacing so wide is A, I wanna be able to run the tiller in there, but more importantly, be able to break up this ground and uh, turn all this back. We can go and pick it all out, which we did in that first section up there that I turned under. We we went and picked all, the, all of that sod and all of the material out of there to try to make it better and cleaner for those vegetables. In this instance, I'm gonna try to experiment a little bit and uh, work in between the rows and then till it all in and break it all up and use that nutrients that's there. And then next year, we just offset the row in the middle of where we were before. So then the following year, we're tilling in all the other stuff that was in that row that we had before. So hopefully, hopefully that'll work out and I'll explain the rest of the garden when I'm done with this. We're gonna finish planting this out and then uh, I'll bring it back. Okay, so I actually think this thing would work really well in ideal soil conditions. Nah, maybe not even in sub-ideal con conditions. This is not garden soil at the moment, okay? So you guys gotta understand that. Um, there's that uh, clump, I'm gonna cut that out later. So we're just gonna bypass it for right now. Um, I'll go up here. So I'm gonna have to get in there with a shovel and dig all that shit out. Yeah, or uh, we gonna be, is that our line? Yeah, that's our line. It's a little bit hard to see where this thing draws its line, especially right now because the soil is so inconsistent and uneven, but I'm actually pretty pleased with it considering the rock, the sod, the grass clumps and all that shit. I'll, uh, I'll take this over making the trenches and all that. And it's kind of satisfying to sit here and watch the thing work, do its thing. You'll see every once in a while you get one that falls out, but if you gotta go slow, you go too fast, it won't, uh, see how we missed a couple there? And then you miss one, it'll pop out, whatever. So we're, we're gonna, we're gonna have inconsistencies in the rows. I can pretty much assure you of that. Um, the other thing I noticed is it won't run the seed out. It'll just quit working before the seed actually runs out, particularly on the corn. I haven't tried other seeds yet, but the bulk of the time, it seems like it's doing okay. Um, closing, is it doing a great job of closing? I don't know. Take a walk back and see if you got exposed seeds. If you do, cover them up, kick a little dirt in on top of them. I'm probably gonna do what? One, two more rows, and then I wanna leave that edge open so we, again, we can keep continuing. Um, other than onions, I don't think we're planting anything else out there, but we're gonna make it bigger. So that way we can till it, work it, and that way next year it's gonna be a better garden to work with versus turning it over and planting it same year. We can work it the whole year, keep tilling it, keep turning it, keep turning that sod into um, green manure versus trying to pick it out of there and throw it away. Because once this breaks down, it's just more nutrients for your soil. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, we're getting after it. Okay, so sweet corn's in. Um, the uh, I'll give you a look at the rest of the garden here, and yeah, we're behind and whatever. This whole uh, job thing's been an adjustment. Everything's been an adjustment, and trying to get things caught up, and actually being able to fix things right instead of just putting out fires has been a big deal. But it takes a lot of time because for several years you were put i was just putting out fires and now not able to actually fix all of the problems so um 
Let me give you a look at the rest of the garden here, the rest of the whatever this looks like. Um, and then we got some more potatoes that we're gonna throw in the ground too. I forgot about those. These uh, sitting down here getting nice and soft and ready. The eyes on them, they'll be perfect. We got a basket there too, so. Um, but most of those are gonna go down here. So we got some tomatoes, not a lot. We don't do a lot with tomatoes. We're root vegetable kind of people. Um, but we do have our cabbage and Brussels sprouts and that kind of stuff like them. Um, pole beans are up and running. Um, carrots. We got this row is carrots, that row is carrots, that row is carrots. And you can see they're just starting to get fuzzy down the middle. Um, I don't know why they germinated so late. Beets are running. You see the beets are just coming up. Uh, that uh, row over there, that short row, sweet potatoes. This is turnips. Um, and then we got six rows of onions in there so far. And again, we gotta, we're we gonna pull all this grass out, another one from the expansion. And then you can see where it's coming through along over there. We gotta get rid of that. Um, six rows of onions, all those are up, running, perfect fucking mint and then the potatoes down there there's uh five hills of potatoes but we're gonna have probably uh, six hills of potatoes we're probably gonna have about double that yet so and then katie's has uh what is she i don't know what she has in here there's eggplant and um watermelon pumpkins cucumbers all kinds of stuff in here so you can see our hills and our theory here, or at least my theory is, is this year, and we left a gap here because I wanted to be able to work all this in. Again, green fertilizer, use it. Um, and I don't care if it goes to seed, you keep turning it, that seed will die. Uh, we will get rid of the thistle though, a couple of them. So next year, your hill goes here. This year, you keep working this ground, working that ground couple of, you know four five six times in the year just take that tiller and go in between rows and then we rotate back and forth so essentially we're rotating crops right on the garden with that especially for your root vegetables that ground is worked and it's so much softer and those ground vet the uh, root vegetables don't have to work nearly as hard to grow they don't you know carrots potatoes all that they just fucking they just run down into the ground when they, that ground is soft and workable so that's my uh, my philosophy anyway. Um, panels are there, posts are there, gra the grass is fucking grown up, but on this end is gonna be asparagus. The far end is gonna be garlic this fall. And then in the end of the original garden, that's gotta, get, the grass is all gotta get cut down, that's gonna get tilled in and it's gonna get turned into rhubarb, so. <sighs> Guys, believe me, we are working. I. Uh, Maybe it's stagnant on the videos right now, but between the shop work, which I got way behind on, by the way, I got uh, had a lot of vehicles come in really fast and hot, and I'm trying not to have the same uh, turnaround rate as most of the shops around here, about a month. I'm trying to cut it back from that, so I got a little bit, uh, I can, you know, get, get, them, get, them in and out, get, get them out and get people back on the road when they're gotta, people gotta wait for a month, shit. And then they're paying over inflated rates. You got somebody that's working for 15, 18 bucks an hour, and then you're charging 80 to 100 dollars an hour for their labor. Are you kidding me? They aren't, they aren't skilled enough for that shit. So I know how this work, this fucking industry works. I uh, my labor rate is what it is because it can be, and I can be uh, I can be honest with it and fucking. I can still make me a couple of dollars and um, save the customer a lot of a lot of dollars and try to get them back on the road faster than a lot of these places can because I'll put in the hours, put in the time, and uh, some of these places they just want to go home and they don't give a shit. But I know some of these projects have taken me a while to get to, some of them, especially my personal stuff. I've put pretty much all that stuff on the back burner and uh trying to been focused on building a reputation for the business and uh customers and all that so it is what it is boys stick around because we got a lot of videos coming i got a lot of work to do hopefully 
it's looking like next week might be a little bit slower and I got to get on to hay. I got to get on to hay equipment. I got to do spring maintenance on it yet or summer maintenance or whatever the hell you want to call it. So we got a lot of videos and I'm going to try to be diligent about it. And uh, I threw some electrical tape on this fucking thing because I don't have time to fix it right. So fuck it. If you guys like what I'm doing, throw me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't ring the bell, get my notifications. Memberships are down there if you all want. I do appreciate it. Certainly helps out on the channel. We're growing. I'm going to try to get you guys some memberships. Members only stuff. I will work as fucking hard as I can and sleep as little as I can. I swear to God. See you guys on the next one.